Okay, so I have an unusual demo disc here, the Namco Transmission Demo Disc Volume 3.2. And why is this unusual? It's unusual because I don't know where the hell it came from. I was going through my old PlayStation 2 games. I was looking for a completely different game, and I ran across the case I had for my copy of Soul Calibur 3. Now, I bought Soul Calibur 3 used from a GameStop, and it didn't have the original case. So it had one of those standard DVD cases with their generic flap on the inside. I open it up. What do I do? I find not Soul Calibur 3, which I ended up finding somewhere else for some reason. But I found this demo disc in there, so I don't know where it came from. I mean, uh, Soul Calibur is a Namco game. So maybe this demo disc came with Soul Calibur 3 and I just don't remember that. But anyway, I have a demo disc that I don't remember at all. So let's let's have a look through this. So Moto GP, I guess they're all going to be Namco games. Namco did have a uh, was known for the racing games. Oh, 2005. This was a late gen PS2 disc. I'd say mostly they are known for the uh, Tekken and Soul Calibur games, uh, but as far as racing goes, they did do Ridge Racer. Accelerate, brake, shift up, shift down, steering, steering, okay. Ah, oh, shit! Oh, you're gonna die. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Break, damn it. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be some kind of like... I thought there was gonna be some kind of like lean in. I actually do have to break. I don't like racing games that much. If I am gonna play a racing game, I'd prefer it to be a much more arcadey style thing. as opposed to something that's realistic. I don't want to ever have to hit the brake. I don't want to get stuck into these, like, sort of optimal pathways that everybody's taking. You can actually see the rubber marks in the road because everyone's steering through the exact same spot. I just don't find it fun. Sim Racer is not my thing. I guess this doesn't look too bad, but this not much going on on the screen. I mean, the environment is barren. It's completely flat. It does have this grass texture which just devolves into noise because of alizin. I'm playing this on a, an emulator which is up the game, rendering it at a 1280 by um, 720 resolution. So it's significantly higher than most every PlayStation 2 game. But even still, I mean, uh, certain PlayStation 2 games just did not look good without their, without a good anti-aliasing solution. And overall, this looks fine. It, that grass texture is really bothering me. You know, I'd probably win it, be winning if I Just got off the gas uh, throttle a little bit. <laughs> Ridge Racer is a semi arcadey kind of thing. It's not particularly realistic, but honestly, I haven't played a Ridge Racer. I haven't owned, rather, I should say, a Ridge Racer in quite a while. Long time. So I can't really say for sure how Ridge Racer plays anymore. I don't know. Never, I mean, I do ride motorcycles, but I never got into motorcycle racing. Why can I manually control shifting if this seems to operate like an automatic? Like, I'm not controlling the shifting right now, but the screen at the beginning seemed to imply that you did. I can't shift early, shift or shift down. 
So what exactly was his point of that? Get out of the way. <laughs> we both should have died there. No fun. <laughs> and I lost. Well, 5 out of 21. Wow, look at that. Wasn't expecting that. First person view. Anyway, let's get out of here. Let me do a save state so I can jump back here to the menu. We love Katamari. Ah, oh, Katamari. Well, this is, I guess, is the sequel. Katamari Damacy was the original, I think. And then we love Katamari or beautiful Katamari or something like that. They made a bunch of these. I haven't played most of them. I mean, the premise of the game isn't complicated and there's only so much of like these really simple gameplay experiences that I want to play I don't want to play two-player hello let me roll some shit <laughs> my god the art style of this game is so weird <laughs> yeah, I don't care about any of this I guess this was the point in which um, I started to realize that there was this huge sort of like cultural difference between Japanese and Western developed games. Now there was for a while back in the... What am I doing? <laughs> God, I don't know how to play this. <laughs> There was it for a time back in like the NES era and the SNES era that oh okay so control the right stick where the majority of games were made by Japanese studios but there's no doubt always an a whole market of Japanese developed games that were never going to find their way into Western markets because they are like culturally just too different and be considered weird if uh, like weird by Western audiences and I never realized that I guess because those games just didn't find their way in the US I mean certain games that were definitely intended for Japanese instead of Western audiences like Earthbound made their way over. <laughs> but a lot of stuff did. And I, this is probably the first game I realized, like, yeah, this is definitely something intended for Japanese audiences. And it found its way over, but it was definitely seems really weird. Huh. Well, nothing's bigger anymore. Is that a can of spam? How do I control the camera? No collision detection on the desks. <laughs> But there is for the people. I mean, it's a cool idea, but it, it seems a little ridiculous that an entire, like, full retail released game was just this. I mean, it seems like the kind of thing that would be a, uh, a mini game nowadays instead of an entire retail release. Although that's, that's actually a pretty common thing that like, the, the gold standard that I always keep coming back to is Grand Theft Auto V, which has the driving sim and it has all this other stuff in it. But it's also got like a golfing mini game that I know people who like spent a lot of time playing golfing golf in the mini game. 
and it's got like the flight sim thing. And I know people online, at least, who spent a lot of time flying planes, getting the dogfights, all that kind of stuff. And these things would be entirely separate games in most generations, in most eras. But no, we hit uh, the generation of up oh, the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> we hit the generation that that came out in, and that was something that, for this huge release, is just some minigame. I mean, I don't know what the hell kind of game this would be a minigame in, but... Actually, I mean, even though the game doesn't look very good, in terms of character detail and all that kind of stuff, Looks more PlayStation 1 esque than anything. It's uh it's actually kind of impressive with how many different separate objects there are and how they are being picked up and being carried around and it's all relating to the physics of like the ball and all that. Because as I'm running over things and they attach themselves to the ball the thing moves differently, so it's sort of having to do these procedural physics calculations. And I know that the the PlayStation 2 had um, had some vector processors on it, which that kind of thing can be useful for. God, what am I doing? Here? Useful for physics calculations. So there isn't necessarily like the way you treat a multi-core processor now, or a physics processor, or anything like that. But still, it seems impressive for the PlayStation 2, because especially since those vector processors were supposed to be used for geometry calculations. Whatever. Let's... Damn it. Uh, I skipped over. Let me... Urban Rain. What the hell is this? I do not remember this game at all. You know, it, it makes me wonder if I ever even played this demo disc. Because if it came with Soul Calibur 3, I was definitely really only interested in playing Soul Calibur 3. And some demo disc that came with it, especially in this era, in 2005, and I probably bought the thing in 2006, maybe, I don't know. At that point, I wasn't really that interested in... Second and Soul Calibur. Wasn't really that interested in video games. Um, I had kind of... I'd stopped playing the PS2, largely. There was the odd game here and there, like like I bought Soul Calibur, Soul Calibur three, and I started to make my move into PC gaming. I thought there was going to be a demo. Is this a video? I'd started making a move into PC gaming, but my PC wasn't a very good gaming machine, so I did have a few games for it. But I was mostly interested in the kind of like productivity things. I was doing a lot of Photoshop at the time. Oh, God, it's John Cena. <laughs> 2007 era John Cena, or 2005 era John Cena. I don't look anything like him. John Cena's not a black guy. Dressed <laughs> like him. Was yeah, I guess it's more accurate to say John Cena was dressed like this guy. But... God, what a ridiculous character that was. Rendering errors. I'm not paying attention to what's going on. It's a beat em up game, I guess. Sort of like um, The Bouncer or, or um, maybe um, Streets of Rage. Just in 3D. Oh, okay. How do I punch? Yeah. There you go. But anyway, I was more interested in like a lot of like sort of productivity things. Like I was doing a lot of Photoshop 
And I think I had maybe picked up like uh, some consumer level version of Premiere. Stuff like that. So I did play a little bit of games on the PC, but I wasn't really doing much of that because it was a bad gaming machine. And I didn't, uh, I wasn't playing a lot of PS2 anymore because I was sort of getting a little, uh, the machine was getting on in years. And when the, uh, the 360, I didn't own a 360 for the first few years of its existence, even though it came out in 05. I didn't think I, I don't think I got a 360 until 2009, I think. So I wasn't on the next generation yet. I guess maybe I was looking forward to the PS3. I did get a PS3. Not at launch, but before too long. What am I supposed to... Is this just like a fighting game? Weird. There's only one attack button. They have swords. Oh, I'm not fighting her. She's on my side. Maybe she could help. <laughs> Just mashing buttons. Sword! Get the sword! Oh, he picked it back up. Oh, she's getting fucked up. It's freaking weird ass games. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Power bomb. Oh, geez, a running power bomb. Oh, they, she's gone. Oh, it's going to suplex him. Don't lose to this fucker. Damn it, Miguel. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, got him in the nuts. And I'm done. I lost. Oh, jeez, an oblique kick. All right, that's enough of this. <laughs> oh, man, World 3, what the hell is this? I mean, obviously, it's a Pac-Man game. Pac-Man was another interesting uh, experience for me. Not this one. I've never played this. Or at least I don't think I've ever played this. Maybe it was on an earlier demo disc I did for this series. I seem to remember a Pac-Man game being there, but it may have been a PS1 game. But anyway, when I was a kid, I'd played Pac-Man, but it didn't occur to me that it was a, such a big deal. Because a lot of people, like, they were talking about from the... Um, 70s or the 80s or whenever the hell Pac-Man came out, that Pac-Man was a big deal. People loved Pac-Man. And I remember thinking when I was a kid, why the hell did people like Pac-Man? I mean, it may have been an old game, but it never came across to me as anything even remotely good. And turns out my perception of Pac-Man was skewed because the version of Pac-Man that I had played... Now, oh, dual stick control, movement and camera control. Surprisingly modern. Oh shit. Which which ghost was this? <laughs> the reason why Pac-Man was such a garbage game for me is because the version of Pac-Man I played was not uh which was not the real Pac-Man. I had played the Atari 2600 version. So even though I wasn't really part of the generation that would have played Atari games, my parents had an Atari, and I, it was actually the first game system that I had owned as a kid, or the first game that I had ever played was on the Atari 2600, either that or the Intellivision. They had an Intellivision also. And the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man is notorious shit. What just happened? What did you die of? Are you allergic to paper, Pac-Man? So, I had played the worst version of Pac-Man ever. 
and I ran away from that experience thinking that's what Pac-Man was. So it skewed my perspective of what Pac-Man was, because, uh, you know, it was bad. Strawberry. Oh, I can punch. I thought I just had to, uh, eat. Alright. So they got the, the power pellet thing, or the big pill, or whatever. In the original Pac-Man, and including the garbage one that I played, once you ate one of the big pellets, you could eat a ghost. And then the ghost would turn into eyes and retreat back to the center and then would reform. But I'm pretty sure, like, it actually made sense for you not to actually eat the ghost because they retreated from you when you, uh, when you ate, when you ate the big pellet. And as soon as you ate the ghost, they would very quickly retreat back to the center and then reform and then start attacking you again. So it makes sense for you not to eat the ghost. Just, uh, just let them run away from you as you cleared the level. Okay, so it's not just, it's not just the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man that sucks. This sucks too. Pac-Man World Rally? Are you, are you fucking with me here? No, oh, at least it's not a game. It's a damn, it's a video. <laughs> I guess the kart racing craze had not yet subsided by this point. I tend to think of the kart racing craze being something that started with Mario Kart on the SNES and it can it really picked up steam in the N64 PS1 era. It was of course Mario Kart 64 and I think Diddy Kong Racing might have been an N64 game, although I don't think I ever played that. But you had plenty of kart racing games on the PlayStation 1. You had like that Chocobo Racing, you had Crash Team Racing, you had a Toon Racing game that Polyphony had made. Uh, all these different kart racers that came out for the PlayStation 1. Some of them are actually pretty good. People tend to overlook anything that's not Mario Kart, but there was plenty of other good games. Just didn't have the, the uh, sort of name recognition that Mario Kart had. And nobody else is willing to just stick around and... Uh, sequel the hell out of games the way that Nintendo is. Although it's hard to say <laughs> some of these other companies. <laughs> but this is late in the PlayStation 2 life cycle and they were still doing kart racing games. That's uh, surprising. Ridge Racer, it's a video. Unfortunately, I wanted to give this a try. Which Ridge, Ridge, which Ridge Racer was this? I didn't read it. Ridge Racer was one of the better looking, at least through the PlayStation 2 era. PlayStation 1, of course, Ridge Racer Revolution, Ridge Racer Type 4, I think it was called. Whatever the last Ridge Racer game for the PlayStation 1 was, actually looked pretty damn good for a PlayStation 1 game. Like, a lot of, some racing games really, I mean, this goes true with the kart racing games as well. It seemed almost like the PlayStation was a very, even though you wouldn't know it to look at it, that the PlayStation 1 was actually a good console in its era for racing games. Maybe it, maybe it came down to the fact that you, um, thanks to the fact that the character models are cars and they don't have um, detailed articulation with the arms and legs or something like that, that a character would. It allowed the PlayStation to... I'm, I'm, I'm speculating here. That it allowed the PlayStation 1 to really do what it could do well, which, which at, at, at the time, push a large number of polygons. Create some nice detailed environments without having to worry about sort of um, memory limitations associated with complex animations. Because PlayStation 1 was not a machine with a lot of memory in it and it was difficult to draw new animations and data off the disc while the game was running. So a kart racer or a sim racer or an arcade racer or whatever like Ridge Racer or those kart racing games or Gran Turismo 
could really like do what the PlayStation could do best. So that's why some of the best looking games on the play. Oh, that was a PSP game. What the fuck? <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to that video. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? Oh. Anyway, racing games looked good on the PlayStation 1. Miss Pac Man. Oh. Namco Museum. Oh. It's another video. These kinds of games are these classic game uh, bundles. I bought a couple of these, but it's the kind of thing that I never really... Oh, they're eating the ghost again. It's the kind of thing that I never really found much of an appreciation for. Because, I mean, as it turns out, a majority of these games I've never played. So, I don't have that nostalgic pull to it, like Dig Dug. I mean, I'm aware of it. I don't think I've ever played it. Pac-Man, okay. Yeah, Pac-Man, it's a better... Or, Miss Pac-Man there. That it was a better version than I played, but I still don't want to sit down and play a lot of Pac-Man. But you get, like, okay, so Dig Dug. I don't feel like playing Dig Galaga. Worth a little bit of fun, but I'm not spending a lot of time playing Galaga. So, it's the kind of thing you pick up, you put the disc in, you play it for maybe, like two or three minutes per title, and then you put the game down and never play it again. At least it's the way it is for me. Some other people may have a more appreciation for these releases than I do, but that's definitely not me. Uh, my brother had once given me one of those Atari Classic consoles. Like the first or second generation of it. And I remember thinking like, oh, that's so cool. Hook it up to the TV, play it. Played it for like between five and ten minutes. Put it down, never played it again. I still have the thing. I don't think I ever played it again. It's just... I don't think it's fun. Even though the Atari was my first console. And I do remember some of those games. And I do remember having fun with those games. It just... The nostalgia is just not there for me. It's weird. Tales of... Legendia? Legenda? Legendia? Fuck, I don't know. Is this an RPG? Rating pending. Powered by Namco. Mel? Melfez? Why are you just spitting out nonsense at me? Anime looking thing. All right, I'm gonna look this game up later because I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. It would be nice if they showed me something a little bit more than the anime cutscenes. Cause I don't even know what kind of game I'm looking at here. My impression was Coolidge, Sen Senel Coolidge. Why are they all so light? 130 pounds. How much was he? Five seven. I never got your name. 6'2", 168 pounds. You? So little. Give him a little bit of bulk. Give up? Just who do you think you're talking to? 108 pounds no with a broadsword. No 6 foot, 146 pounds. Are you getting like your metric to imperial mixed up? 95 pounds. You really are stupid. Wait until I'm finished. Oh, come now. Let's not worry about little things, okay? She's bigger than the other guy. Okay, so it does look like an RPG. The battle system looks a little chaotic. Is it one of those ones where you queue up... Um, you queue up your actions and they all take place at the same time? Is it that kind of thing? I think the RPG, or the Japanese RPG genre has taken a number of different, like, ups and downs. It had always, well, I guess since uh, Dragon Warrior, it had always had a bit of a niche market in the West, in the US at least, but it was big in Japan. But it, uh, Final Fantasy VII in the PlayStation 1 era was a big open, open door for the market in the U.S. 
And it was so popular that a lot of games that wouldn't have found their way to the U.S. did. So you had, like, the Xenogears or, like, lots of other RPGs came over to Western Shores. And that, like, that went on pretty much through uh, the PS2 era. Even though it was maybe not quite as prevalent, but, like, this definitely doesn't seem like a game that would have been released in the U.S. Um, prior, if, if Final Fantasy VII hadn't opened up the doors. But once you got into the, the PS360 era, there was this big shift away from the Japanese-style RPG and back towards the Western-style RPG in the U.S. So, the Western-style RPG never really had a big foothold in consoles. On consoles, it was more of a PC thing. So you had, like, Elder Scrolls or, um, say, Fallout or Planescape, um, Wasteland, those kinds of things. Um, Ultima, there's another one. Those were sort of, like, American-style or Western-style, but they were largely isolated to PCs. But with the PlayStation 3 and the, P and the Xbox 360, you saw Oblivion, which was Elder Scrolls IV release, and that became such a big deal, it sort of redefined for a Western audience what an RPG would look like, which I guess was a year or so after the release of this. And because of that, the shift away from the Japanese-style RPG for the American audience, it that genre kind of didn't die out, but sort of uh, died down in the U.S. Of course, you had your big releases. You had your Final Fantasy VI, or VI, <laughs> Final Fantasy XII. You had, um, you had Final Fantasy XIII, which d derided a divisive game. You had, um, I mean, not, not a whole lot of the Persona games. Some people are really big into the Persona games. I haven't really given them a fair shot, so I don't want to comment too much on those but the big JRPG releases in the West were rather few and far between as opposed to how common they were in the PlayStation 1 and into the PlayStation 2 era now I'd say there's a little bit of a re-emergence of that style of game in the West thanks to um, not necessarily the console market but more PC market, thanks to tools like Unreal Engine or Unity, it's allowed smaller developers or even developers that aren't Japanese to make games of that style and to cater to a market who enjoys those types of games but haven't, hasn't seen a lot of or as many good releases anymore. So, like RPG Maker is a is a good example for small scale releases. Most of the stuff for that engine is crap, but I mean there is still stuff there, and I have played a couple of decent games made with those tools. But I'd say Steam is probably a big factor in this because it's an easy way to cheaply and efficiently distribute a game, provided it gets noticed, as opposed to the 90s and 2000s when you had even though disc-based production was a lot easier than cartridge production, it um, still costs money. Steam, distribution, nope. Just gotta get Valve to uh, agree to distribute. Time Crisis 3, unfortunately, it's a game genre which is dead. Ever since um, Duck Hunt, for me anyway, had some fun with Duck Hunt, although the fact that it was shooting birds was a little boring I got end up with, but Lethal Enforcers. I bought Lethal Enforcers for the PS... Uh, PS uh, for the SNES. Loved that game, even though I found it to be rather difficult. <laughs> but Time Crisis. Oh my god. I love Time Crisis in the arcade. Not so much in... Well, I did own one of the Time Crisis games. Probably this one. For the PS2. With the gun con and all that kind of stuff. I, th I thought this genre was so much fun because you have a gun in your hand and you're shooting at the screen. But unfortunately it died out. I know there was a lot of pushback to this kind of thing 
uh, following the Columbine Massacre. If, if you're not from the U.S. or not born in that era, the Columbine Massacre was a school shooting. A, a uh, it's all over the news. It's all everybody was talking about before shootings became so common in the U.S. that the mass shootings became so common in the U.S. that you're hearing about them every three days. But it was a huge deal, and there was a huge blowback. I remember one of the um, Resident Evil games actually sort of got um, adjusted, let's call it, thanks to Columbine. But a lot of these kinds of games that sort of like the murder simulator kinds of things that are just feel a little bit too realistic or look while a person's playing it to be a little bit too realistic or sort of frowned upon. So maybe that had a part to do with the decline of the genre, but a big part of the problem was simply that the change from CRT televisions to LCD or plasma TVs just changed it because the way that the guns worked um, just don't, don't, doesn't work with LCDs. I had heard about a technology that someone had invented a, um, a gun that would work on an LCD TV, but I don't know if there's been any like significant releases to take advantage of the technology. But it was a it was always an expensive genre to be a player of, because the arcades they were always more expensive games uh, to play in the arcade than most other releases because of the extra hardware, you know. But it was also more expensive to own. Because, like, let's say you bought Time Crisis 3. Yeah, Time Crisis 3 was definitely the game I bought. But you'd buy the game. You'd also have to buy the gun con, the, the pistol. And, like, that just... like It's like if every... If the average PlayStation 2 game was, let's say, $50, then Time Crisis 3 would be, like, 70 or 80 And tell so, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I had a job at the time and all that. I'm pretty sure, anyway. What year was this? <laughs> Still a lot of money. Did not, um, wasn't an easy buy. Time Crisis Crisis Zone. I've never even heard of this one. What I really liked about Time Crisis in the arcade was that, unlike Lethal Enforcers or Silent Scope or a lot of the other um, light gun games, in the arcade or in the home uh, releases, the Time Crisis had two things. One, it had a cover mechanic. You had a pedal you stepped on to move in and out of cover. But the guns themselves, the slide, would hammer back, would move back, simulating recoil. Which, I mean, it, it didn't feel like a uh, natural recoil. But it was still, I get something. Now, I, I know that they... I'm pretty sure, anyway, that there were home release versions of guns that had that same kind of recoil. But the only thing I had ever owned that did anything like it was an aftermarket PlayStation 2 light gun, which was shaped like an... I think it was shaped like an MP5. But it had, a, like, a standard uh, rumble motor, like you find in a DualShock in it. So when you'd shoot it, it would just shake a little bit. So that gave you a little bit more of a, uh, like a recoil experience and just nothing like what you play in Lethal Enforcers or your standard gun con. But it wasn't anything special. I used it a lot to play that stupid Resident Evil light gun game for the PS2. What the hell was that called? Um, Dead Aim? It was called Dead Aim. God, that game was batshit crazy. <laughs> Xenosaga Episode 2. I tried so hard to get into Xenosaga. Because I love Xeno Gears. And although that was a Square... Squaresoft game. And the, the guy who directed it... Uh, I guess he wanted to keep doing the Xeno games. But... Zeno, whatever you want to call it, whatever country you're from, you might pronounce that differently. But Square didn't want him, let him do it. Or maybe fired him or something, I don't know. But, uh, he went to Namco. And he couldn't make a proper sequel to Xenogears because Square owns that IP. 
So he did this sort of like spiritual successor. Xenosaga. And I played all the way through Xenosaga episode one. And I found it like a little pretentious. And the cutscenes were too long. But I, I stuck through it. I found it a little bit confusing because it was a little bit too dependent on you looking up in the codex what the fuck was going on in all of the cutscenes that you just watched. Like, there was a guy, he was like a, an officer on a starship that he doesn't really do much in the story, but, like, there was a flashback to him, like, as being noted as being some sort of genetically engineered soldier. And he would constantly get, like, he had a hard time integrating into society after a war ended or something like that. And he would get stressed out. And this symbol would appear on his head. And he would go insane and he would kill someone. And I'm like, what the hell is this symbol on his head? As far as I could tell, nothing in the game proper gave you an indication on what the hell this was. Turns out you had to jump into the codex after you had seen the cutscene and then read the entry to find out it had something to do with the sort of reconditioning that he went through. And it's like, that... That's bad storytelling there. I mean, don't expect me to jump into ancillary material in order to figure out what the fuck went on in what I just saw. Find some way of conveying that to me. Don't expect me to look it up. Anyway, I played through the first Xenosaga, I started playing Xenosaga Episode 2. Can't say I got that far into it. Xenosaga, some of the characters I thought were alright. I hated Junior, but like some of the other characters I thought were alright. But just the the way the story was being told just it 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 bothered me. <laughs> Ace Combat 5, the unsung war an unsung war. What? Flight Sims. I guess Flight Sims looked all right on the PlayStation 1. But, I mean, space-based Flight Sims looked better, of course, because you didn't have an environment to render. But I feel like the it was something that the PS2 really got a chance to shine at was with Flight Sims. Because, I mean, the PS2 had some problems with, like, texture streaming and all that. But when you're flying around in a jet and you're nowhere near the ground. You don't need high-res textures on the environment. Listen, the only thing across that ocean is. Are you gonna show us any base. gameplay? That's Yuktobanian territory. Yuktobania just declared war. They've lost hey, Colonel Campbell. Simultaneously too. But haven't we been Scalp is bleeding. Since the war 15 years ago? Scalp is bleeding. That does look anyway. nice. Yes, my scalp is bleeding. Just for a little bit of context, I was... I had to replace a, um, my water heater. And it burnt out. You know, that, that happens. So I pulled the old one out, and I had to replace some of the pipes going into it. So it was all copper. So I had to solder the lines and all that. So I placed the torch. I shut it off, of course, on top of the new heater. And then I had dropped something behind it, so I'd go bend down, and the uh, propane torch fell off and clocked me in the head. This was some ten hours ago. But for some reason, like, it was, it was a pretty big cut. There's blood all over the damn place. I did not get concussed or anything like that. Although I did get angry and kick something. Oh, no, it's not bleeding. It's dark in this room. It's hard for me to see my hands. <laughs> it does suck, though, because I was going to get my hair cut today. I get this big scar, or scar, this big scab in my scalp. And it's probably a little bit of, uh, like, matted blood in my hair, too. So I can't go and do that today. I was sure of it. 
It would raise a few too many questions. I didn't play a lot of flight sims on the PS2. One, I mean, I started when I started getting into um, PC gaming, which is around this time. Played a few flight sims there, but it was not something that I really got into. I mean, I remember like five years ago or so, I bought a flight stick for my PC and thought, I'm going to start doing some not good flight sim stuff. Not too many games into it before I uh, before I gave up on that. <laughs> okay, so these are save files. Tekken Tag Tournament. That game this 2005 disc? Tekken Tag Tournament was a launch PS2 game, so it was like five years earlier. Shit. Uh, okay, so it's Nina, Jin, and uh, Jack. Anyway, well, it's weird that they have this save file you can download for a five-year-old game. Tekken 4. Okay. So Tekken Tag Tournament. Tekken Tag Tournament was a it was an arcade game that I think and it was released for the PS2. But it was sort of like all of the characters from Tekken's 1, 2, and 3 merged in the one game and it kind of played like Tekken 3. It looked a little bit better than Tekken 3 because it was a PS2 game. Tekken 4. Well, I figured Tekken 4 had already been released for a little while, so who the hell's uh, Fox, Paul, and uh, Christy? It's another um, another save file, so it's probably already an old game. Moto GP3, damn sure not downloading this one. Xenosaga Episode 2, another save file. Unlocks alternate character costumes. Okay, so maybe if I ever do an LP of Xenosaga Episode 1. I will. Okay, no, you know what? It says Xenosaga Episode 1, and it's got the subtitle. But it, this is for two. Okay, so you know what it probably is? It's probably one of them, like, carry over save things, so they're both for the same console, Xenosaga 1 and 2. I guess if you had clear data for Xenosaga 1, when you load up Xenosaga 2, you'd get. Uh, costume unlocks. Okay. It's interesting. It's not the kind of thing that I typically think of of, of carrying over saves between games in a series until like until say Dragon Age or um, Mass Effect I guess. Bounty Hounds. Play video. I don't know what this is. So many games came out in that era that just completely passed me by. I mean, in every era, really. It was definitely a different feeling, though. I mean, there were always, in every console generation I was a part of, there were always a lot of releases. Like, the Atari 2600, there were so many releases that it tanked the game console market. PlayStation 1, 2... All those, so many releases. But I think there was a difference back in, like, the NES era. Because although there were definitely games in that era that I didn't, the NES and SS and NES era, lots of games I don't remember or just didn't play or anything like that. I think due to the fact that, like, the big releases were rather rare and there's a big uh, gap between them, that you tended to get this impression that, like, look, you look at something like um, Super Mario Brothers 3, or, or maybe something earlier in a console lifespan, like um, A Link to the Past, which came out, or F Zero, another early generation game, which came out for the SNES early in its life cycle, but because of the way. Nintendo didn't release a lot of games and those were the biggest releases and cartridge production took so long that there'd never be a lot of them are in the market. 
like Link to the Past ended up being a big deal for the SNES for a few years. You get to the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, all of that. Discs were cheaper to manufacture, so reasonable enough to meet market demand could be produced at the launch of a game. And that would mean everybody who really wanted it or was going to get it could reasonably get it within the first few months of its release. It also meant, though, that games tended to fade from memory a little bit. Like, whatever the hell this was, I'm, I'm sure this was not a 10 out of 10 game. But even if it were, it wouldn't be something that people would be talking about it as a big release that people are playing for the first time a year or two later. How did I get on this? What the fuck am I talking about? This is some stupid ass game I never heard of. <laughs> Tekken 5. Okay, so we got a video here. Way to organize these things, guys. So this is during Tekken 5. I never played the PlayStation 2 version of Tekken 5, but I did own the PlayStation 3 downloadable version, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. Now that was a hit or miss port of it. Because on one hand, it had the gameplay of Tekken, which is really what I was looking for. And it looked better than the PlayStation 2 version, of course, new console generation and all that. It ran at a high frame rate, high resolution, all that kind of stuff. It was nice. But, remember that this was a download game, a downloadable game on the early PlayStation 3. So you had, for the early PlayStation 3, you had either a 20 or a 60 gigabyte hard disk. So like, let's say you had a full download, downloadable video game, which could be like 10 gigabytes, 15 gigabytes, 25 gigabytes. Well, you know, you can't suck up all a person's space, all their storage space. So they made a cut-down version of Tekken 5 for the PlayStation 3. So it had the gameplay, had all the characters, had all that kind of stuff, but all of the um, all of the or whatever he said. Well, I guess he's dead. All of the cutscenes and stuff were cut out of it. So you didn't have your standard arcade mode, you didn't have all this other kind of stuff. It was just sort of like a bare bones version of it. In order to keep the install size low. Where the hell am I looking? Oh, okay, so I thought we lapsed into like a jeans commercial or something. So yeah, they brought back a lot of the old Tekken characters here. Yeah, that's smart. So is the girl uh, riding off the fucking space needle on a bicycle. Shit, he just pulled a Mysterio. You know what? I'm not sure I really have even played, put any time playing a Tekken game since Tekken 5. Wow, it's been a long time. Weird because Tekken was a game series that I distinctly remember being rather attached to. I guess more or less that comes from Tekken 2 and Tekken 3. Maybe a little bit from Tekken Tag Tournament. Where I. I, I didn't even own Tekken 2 until years later. It's one of those games I bought used later on. Same thing with Tekken 3. Jeez, how many of these games did I buy new? None of them, in fact. Huh. 
hell? What am I on about? <laughs> okay, we've started over. Okay, so that was an interesting demo disc. Of course, all Namco games. Most of them were crap. Okay, let's let's uh, let's start over and just let me rate these. Not for me. Not for me. It's just kind of bad. <laughs> it's kind of bad. It's the video. It's the video, but I'm sure the game is fine. Not for me. Just a video. The game was alright, but this was just a video. Never played it, just a video. Episode 2. Not for me. Maybe I'll... Maybe I should give Xenosaga another try. Because honestly, it's been... 15 years... Since I tried playing any of the Xenosaga games. So maybe... I don't know, maybe I just wasn't mature enough for him or something like that. I should give him... I should give it another try. It would really suck, though, to start, like, an LP of this <laughs> series and then, like, drop off after five episodes. I've done that before. I'm, I'm terrible with this. Nah, just a video. Tekken Tag was an alright game, but this is download. Tekken 4... You know what? Maybe I never even played Tekken 4. That's a shame. Not for me. Demon Saga Episode 1. I've already made my comments. Just a video, but it does not look impressive. Tekken 5 was a good game, but this is a video. And anyway, that's... Oh, this is... Yeah, I'm back at, at the beginning. So, okay, that's whatever this disc was called. <laughs> okay, so this was a download for a different game, Moto GP3. The one on the demo for this disc was four. Because, you know, you needed a bunch of different versions of this. 